Hey guys, I'm Joe Duffy, the Handy Fireman. Today, we're going to build a wood sled. Okay, let's talk about what you need in order to build this wood sled. First off, you can use any wood you want. Really, you have to try to decide if you're making this more for decoration or to be functional. Um, I don't like to make things for decoration. I want everything to be functional, uh, especially, you know, I have young sons, so I'm going to make this sled functional. So I'll be using some hard maple that I have left over, and I'm going to share with you the sizes that I have this cut in. And I'll also share those sizes in my description of this project. But you can feel free to do whatever sizes you want to accommodate whatever it is you're going for. Okay, let's start with the skis. So I cut these skis at four foot long. And what I really want is I really want them about 38 inches long. But I need to do some cuts at angles so I can use that extra material there to try to give the front of these skis a curve. So I'm gonna mark my skis at 38. And I'm gonna take them over to the table saw and show you how to cut these angles. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to make some 15 degree cuts on my skis. And I'm gonna use the table saw here, but if you don't have a table saw, 100 other ways to do this, miter saw, band saw, hand saw, whatever you wanna do. But so I'm gonna to have to set my blade at mathematicians out there 90 15 75 degrees so i'm gonna have to set my blade at 75 degrees Now, if you'd prefer to do it on the miter saw, look, correct, come over here, set it, 15 degrees, lock it, simple. You just want to be sure that every time you make that cut, you're flipping it to alternate the cut so that your cuts end up looking like this. Okay, now you have your skis and each ski has three of these pieces with 15 degree cuts on each one. So when you put 15 and 15 together, what's that give you? 30, 15 and 15, 60, 15 and 15, 90. So it takes us up to a perfect 90 but it also gives us the curve of like the front of a sled. So if you're doing this for decoration, no problem. Just glue those together with some wood glue. I told you I wanted mine to be functional, so I'm gonna reinforce mine. Just put some dominoes in here and then a little 45 cross member. All right, so now I got dominoes in all my little pieces here. And I also cut just these support brackets, just because I know these boys are gonna give this thing a beating. So once it all goes together here, you'll glue all those together. And then I just have this little piece right here that's gonna go right there. Just a leftover piece of cherry that I had. and. It adds to it, it looks pretty cool, but it's also gonna help with the structural support of the front of the ski. Now 
Now we're just gonna give this thing a good sanding. And as you're sanding the outside here, you can always just push some glue into any cracks you have. And as you sand over it, the dust will actually mix in with the glue and fill whatever gaps you have. Um, and we're also gonna be rounding this edge as we're sanding as well. Cool. All right, got the skis sanded. Rounded the outside edge. I think it looks pretty good. All right, now it's time to mark for the cross members. So my cross members are 14 inches each. So this is gonna be sitting 14 inches apart and I'm going to have them, I think, about eight inches up, uh, just in case Big Brother wants to ride in the back. Sixteen and about 24, so that way, when these are on... And I'm going to space these out here evenly, but in order for it to not look weird, I'm going to have to cut these cross members at an angle through here and on the outside. Plus, it will give us some clearance. So... I got all three of my cross members marked out and for these I'm gonna cut them using the bandsaw just because that bandsaw makes it so easy to cut through anything all these different shapes and stuff if you don't have a bandsaw you could use a jigsaw whatever for me the bandsaw is gonna make quick work of them Now that we've got our pieces cut, we can take them and clean up any bandsaw marks we have on a sander. And now, cause I always think it looks better, I'm just going to run this router bit on the inside here and then probably on the sides here that you're gonna see, just cause I think it's gonna give it like a little classy touch. All right, so I got my three cross braces right here. You see I marked out lines here on both my skis and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to attach these kind of temporarily but I'm going to be using wood glue and like a fast acting wood glue so I'm going to attach these where I want them to go and then I'm going to flip the skis over and I will be attaching them with dowels essentially. You can use screws, you can use whatever you want, but I'm gonna use dowels.
Okay, now I have all those glued into place. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna flip it over. And you can see here, I marked on the bottom where I was going to put my dowels. So you would just take your measurement from the other side and then go half your thickness of whatever size wood you're using. And then you can throw your screws or dowels or whatever you're gonna put into it. Okay, so I got all of my dowel holes drilled uh, to attach the skis to the cross mounts. So now all I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of wood glue, put it in there, put my dowels in there, tap them into place. And then once those dry, I can just flush cut them and then you can just sand them clean. See what it looks like with all the dowels in you see it just has a real nice clean look so once those are in your dowels your screws you can flip it back over you can start seeing what the seat's gonna look like on there So I'll mark all those, but before I attach the seat itself to the base, I'm gonna do a few things, like we're gonna cut up the sides first, and I'm probably going to cut a little angle on each one of the maple pieces and route it out just so it looks a lot cleaner. All right, so I did end up cutting these maple pieces and giving them just a edge on the router table. So when I go to put them on, they're just gonna look a little bit nicer. Something like that, you know? And then over here, I will show you my side pieces. So I've got this one kind of lined out where I want it. Just going to take this and then transfer it to this other side piece and then we'll get to cutting it. All right, so I got my shapes for my sides traced out on both boards, basically just mirrored. And now I'm gonna take them, I think I'm just gonna lop this angle off on the miter saw on both sides. And then I'll just cut the rest out on the band saw. And then for my handles here, I'm just gonna use the drill press to drill these out. And then I will just run a line between the two holes on the edges here and cut the remaining out with a jigsaw or a handsaw. And then we'll clean it up on the sander, of course, and I will put an edge on this on the router table as well. All right, I got the sides cut out in the design I want anyway. And now I'm gonna take them over to drill press station and I'll show you what I was talking about, putting those handles in there. Okay, now if you did everything right, you should have two identical pieces here cut out, mirrored. And it looks like we got pretty lucky on this one, guys. All right, so like I said, these are gonna be some handles. So you have your holes, just take a straight edge, whatever straight edge you have, 
and then just line it up with the bottom edges of the holes. And then just draw a line. Both sides here. And all you're going to do with that is cut that out. And that's going to be your handle. And like I said, you can use whatever. A jigsaw is probably going to be the fastest and easiest. Okay, now that we got handles cut out, we got some imperfections from the blade marks and stuff. We can take them back over. To the sander we'll just clean them up real quick on the sander and then I'm gonna go put an edge on them on the router all right so I got it routed out I do have to just finish smooth sanding this anyway let me tell you my plan my plan was to make the sides and attach it from the bottom with dowels and so if you want to do that, you can do that. And I was just going to use, you know, this leftover piece and do the backup at that angle. And then, you know, maybe shape a headrest in there or something. But I have a new plan, of course. So stick with me, but I'm not going to attach these yet because I'm actually going to cut some notches in them so I can do a cooler back. Okay, so like I said, I was gonna use this as my back piece and just put it at an angle there. But I decided to do away with this piece and I cut a bunch of walnut and maple strips just in one inch strips, three quarter inch thick wide. And then I notched out the back of my side pieces here so that I can do a little like half lap lattice with the walnut and the maple. And I'm kind of just gonna make it into like a cool angled headpiece there at the top. So now that I have my side pieces the way that I want them, and I don't need to make any more modifications to them, I can attach them here to my seat. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line the back up with these pre-marked lines that I laid down to tell me where I'm gonna put my dowels into my cross members. And I'm gonna line it up just as flush as I can to where I just routed the edge there of that seat just so it flows smoothly. So I'm gonna lay a bead of glue down under there and then I'm gonna clamp it and I'm gonna flip it over while it's clamped and then put the dowels in. And that way, once that's attached, I can come back and I can dowel in my seats. All right, so this is what we're looking at now. Once the side piece is either screwed or doweled or however you want to attach it into the seat. So I think the dowels looks pretty clean, pretty cool. And then you'll take it and once you get both sides on, I'm gonna line it up. You know, I marked lines on the side here to line everything up. And I got it about 
three inch overhang in the back and then just a little more in the front and again you can put your screws into here or dowels or however you want to attach that so let me do the other side and then we'll catch up to that oops looks like somebody forgot to record that part of the build anyway i did the other side i put my dowels into my seat planks into the base and now i'm going to start working on the back and like i said i'll be making the back using just a half lap on the table saw and a dado blade <laughs> Okay, so here's my pieces that I notched out to go into my back piece that I notched out. So I'm just going to basically put them together in half laps, you know, they'll fit on each other halfway down, halfway down. Oh, if I can push this in. Halfway down, halfway down on both sides, so. I think it will look pretty cool. Now you can see how I got it built up like this. I added some dowels just for some support here, some strength. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna flush cut the dowels, I'm gonna flush cut this off, and then I'm just gonna take this down with that angle, just to try to give it a cool look. So now we're to the point where we're going to sand everything down again, just to finish sand. And you don't have to be too thorough with this if you plan on painting it or if it's just for decoration. Okay, I got this thing sanded down. And now I'm just going to wipe the dust off and you can finish it in whatever you want, paint it. I think the first thing I'm going to do though is wipe all the dust off and give it a nice mineral oil bath just so I can kind of see what she's going to look like. Well, there she is. She is beautiful. I'm really happy I got the chance to make this video for you guys. And at the same time, I got to create this beautiful piece for my son that he's gonna get to cherish for the rest of his life and hopefully one day hand down to his children. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did and I can't wait to see what you guys create. Thanks for watching.